Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to my Royal Ascot Day 2 preview. We're just going to give a quick summary of day one. Some racing, cracking racing. Some results. We had a couple of winners on the day. We had a couple of big price places. We could have had a better day, but all in all, it was a cracking day's racing, and we can't be uh, complaining. We had a couple of winners, a couple of places at big prices, so... It's all about a bit of fun. Look, we're going to just review each race, a little, little snippet from each race. We kicked off with the Queen Anne Stakes. That was the first race, the Group 1, over a mile. Uh, modern Games, our selection, disappointing back and forth. Inspire for Frankie Lovers was heartbreaking. Nick, uh, loser to Kevin Ryan, Neil Cannon teaming up here with triple time. Was given some right here by Neil Cannon. He absolutely drilled this lad. Um, watching it back again, it was a savage ride. I uh, I thought he was getting run away with. We were just so aggressive on this horse. He knew what he had to do with him, and uh, he ran very free. So I didn't think he was going to get home. But thirty three to one, he uh, he could be a horse with a bit of a future. This lad. But anyway, we kicked on to the Coventry then, and we got our first winner on the board, River Timber, for Aidan O'Brien, Ryan Moore, eleven to eight. Um. Yeah, I thought this horse is very good and even better than his winner margin suggests by a neck. Two Army Ethos back in second. Uh, over the far side, the second, third, they were over the near side and he was over the far side. Jesse Harrington's horse that was sold last night at the sales. Ran a cracker back and forth for Frankie. Give me the beat, boys. But yeah, River Timber, this lad looks to have a bit of a future going forward. Then we went to the King Stands. It was over the over the five and Highfield Princess. We our selection dramatized ran poor enough. I think this race fell apart a bit really. Bransdale was a fourteen to one winner, a lent to the good of Highfield Princess for John Quinn back in second. Uh Archie Watson, Holly Doyle. Archie Watson had a, he had another Stuart's inquiry to endure after losing the sprint a couple of years ago that Oshie Murphy wrote. But yeah, he held on to the rest this time. So Branzel for uh, Holly and Archie in the King Stan Stakes. Then we went to the feature race, the St. James's Palace Stakes. I said it was a two-horse race. It was a two-horse race. I, said, I fancied this Pennington out of the way. I said he's a good thing. He, he duly obliged three and three-quarter length winner here, beating the horse we thought would run him home, Chaldean, back in second, 13th to eight. Sharon ran a cracker back at 33 to one, and our each way selection was fourth. Isaac Shelby ran a bit weird at Isaac Shelby. He kind of came off it and stayed on again, so maybe he might need to step up, maybe. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited. He's a very exciting horse, this Pennington, from way he's progressed this year the whole way through to winning the Irish uh, Guineas and now backed it up into St. James's Palace Stakes. So he's a, he's, a, he's a nice horse, and of course, we were absolutely sweet on him. I love the way he's bred, and he just, yeah, he's an exciting horse going forward. Then we went to uh, one of the long distance handicaps, uh, Nicky Henderson. Of course, these races are normally dominated by Willie Mullins and Henderson, the training trainers, or the, the national trainers, and a horse with no name who's in full. For William Buick, a se- odds of 7 1 was a length and three quarters winner back with calling the win back in second. Then we went to this Palumpa race, which is the mile one listed race. And we've seen another big price winner here, 16 to one for Roger Berry and Jack Mitchell. Of course, the owner, Sheikh Mohammed Obeid, had a winner in the first race. Those yellow colors with the black spots, synonymous in race and Royal Champion at 16 to one. Beat Aidan O'Brien's Boyshe Ballet back in second, odds of seven to one. And Joseph's Buckaroo, the gambler race, back in third at three to one. Finished the card then. We had the Copper House handicap over mile six, and all eyes were on Vaughan here. I said last night six to four was too skimpy. Well, I meet my words because he ended up even money and he won by seven and a half lengths. An absolute machine, this horse is. I said he was well in on his rating, but um, I just thought the odds were a bit skimpy. But look, sometimes hindsight's a great thing. The six to four looks massive now. He was, uh, I thought Ray Moore was class on him. I, I, I know you're going to. You're probably going to be sick of me saying that, but it's just my opinion. These jockeys and and uh, there's elite status for a reason, and I thought he gave this horse a cracking, cracking ride. Now, obviously, ran out seven and a half lengths, but there was no way he was getting beaten, this guy. So, yeah, good to see Vaughan putting up performance here. All of you seem to be going for the Melbourne Cup the back end of the season, but I'd say there's a couple of big longer distance handicaps now on the flat for him for the year, and he, he, he could be, uh, he'll take a bit of whacking on these. 
Uh, we had tipped Sam. We just mentioned Sam Cook to run well, and he did. He was placed at twenty-eight to one, thirty-three to one. In play, all day he was. So yeah, it was nice to get that one placed as well. But um, the main fancy was Charlie Appleby's horse ran poor enough. But that was look cracking days racing, and we look forward to day two, which is again um, a half two start. We're going to kick off at the Queen Mary. This is for the Phillies. It's a group two, two for two year olds over five D. This is one of the fastest races of the meeting. We have twenty eight declared. Twenty eight. Yeah, it always gets a big feel this race, and it's it's a fantastic race to watch. If you can get the winner of it, it's it's a bonus. But uh, I had the winner of it two years ago, Quick Susie from Gavin Cromwell. Not so much luck looking at last year, but I'm going to team up with the jockey and the owner, not the trainer. So I'm going to go for Midnight Affair here at 10 to 1 for Danny Tudop, Richard Fahey in the colours of Clipper Logistics, who, of course, Danny is retained to. This daughter of Dark Angel, she was second on debut. Albeit she she got checked in her run and she was only beaten a length three quarters by soprano, changed by trained by George Boy, who's favour for the Albany later in the week. Um and he's four to one for that race. But then went to Beverly, uh over the distance, five furlongs on good to form, and I thought put in a very good performance. Won by a length and a quarter. And there was only nine runners in the race. Not probably the race wasn't that deep, but the way the way she'd done it, very impressed that day, and she stepped up from her debut run. So I think at ten to one, you probably get a couple of extra places on the day. Uh, I think she's an each way a chance for me. I'd rather go with her than Car Bucks, Philly Beautiful Diamond, who looks like she's the one to beat Twilight Sun Philly for Clifford Lee in the saddle. But at seven to two, I'd rather take a chance with Richard Fahey, and Richard Fahey's been very bullish about Midnight Affair, so for me, Midnight Affair, not going to waffle on too much longer, 10-1 to 1 each way in the first race, hopefully we get off the flyer there, <laughs> but, but by the time the jump out stars blinking, they're going to miss these 28 ladies run down the track, then we're going to go to the Kensington Palace, and this is a Phillies handicap, it's over 7 furlongs, we've got 20 run, r- lining up here, I'm going to go for one down the bottom of the weights, with a jockey that's catching my eye lately, Mikey Sheehy with Joseph O'Brien, um, I thought run in the core of the last day set some up lovely here finished third of 20 and uh, yeah it was only beaten about a length, uh, half a length that day from an improving couple of imp- uh, in 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 and in, in, was a very good run I thought in my eyes and still a bit of an eye catcher relatively still unexposed um, four year old uh, in off a lovely weight jockey that I think is he's very underrated and Joseph is using him a lot I think uh, that just if Joseph if Joseph O'Brien uses you as a jockey, and this guy's lost his claim, take note. So yeah, Adelizia, I'm probably butchering the name, but number seventeen down the bottom of the way, it's Joseph O'Brien, Mikey Sheehy, seven to one. Hopefully we get off to uh, a good start here in the Kensington Palace. Then we're going to kick to race three. Now I went down through this race. We've got ten runners lining up here. It's the Duke of Cambridgeshire. It's for Phillies and Mares, the group two over the mile. Um, we've got, as I said, we've 10 runners lining up here. I was kind of torn between Jumbly for Joseph O'Brien again, Ryan Warren the saddle, of course, Miss uh, Dorian Tabor on, so we'd ride for connections. And I, 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 yeah, torn between that and Rafe Beckett's Frankie de Tory combination here, Prosperous Voyage. Look, uh, I can't split them, therefore I'm, I don't think I'm going to have a bet in the race. But maybe a small little bit of a reverse forecast here with Jumbly and Prosperous Voyage. I was I was actually uh, I was taken by Prosperous Voyage run in Epsom the last day. I actually backed her. Top Frankie rode her like um, the best horse in the race, kept her out the back. Um, she's be, actually, she beat Inspire the back end of last year. Um, in the Falmouth, yeah, and that was, but she she can put in a poor performance, but on a going day, she's very good. She, maybe she could be the one to give Frankie a golden day, um, but for me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave the race alone, um, but a small bit of a reverse forecast maybe on Jumbly and Prosperous Voyage, 
Um, then we go to the feature race of day two. This is the Prince of Wales Stakes. It's a group one. And it's over mile one. We have only six runners lined up here, but we've we've a classy little field here. Addy Air for Charlie Appleby, um, five to two. Then we've Luxembourg, or sorry, we've Luxembourg ahead of the market for Aidan O'Brien, Ryan Moore, nine to four, and Bay Bridge at seven to two for some Michael Stout. I'm going to go for Bay Bridge here, and I'm just going to give you a little bit of an offer. Bile Sports have second to, to the Fav, money back as a free bet. I think this Bay Bridge is a cracking bet here at seven to two. I think he was unlucky in the court. Not unlucky in the court. Well, he was a little bit unlucky in the court. But I think Luxembourg got to run the race. He was given a crack and ride by Ray Moore. And I just think this lad, he won the champion stakes. He won the champion stakes in Ascot the back in the last year. And uh, yeah, I think on a go on day with Michael Stout's record at Royal Ascot, Richard King's goat is is having a bit of a. Bit of a trying time at the minute, of course. He did get the jock off of the Derby winner, last year's Derby winner, but, of course, he doesn't run now. Um, but he was meant to run here, actually. Um, and the question was, would he keep the ride uh, now that he did, Desert Crown didn't run? Would Frankie get on board here? But it's great to see uh, Michael Stout sticking by Richard King's got here. I think he won the top riders in the way room. And yeah, I'm going to go for Baybridge here at 72. Remember, there's a bit of an insurance with boys if you finish second to the SP5. Five or more after run, I think. Where you get money back as a free bet. So for me, definitely going to go for Baybridge here in the future race. Then we go to the Royal Hunt Cup. It is one of the best handicaps on the card. It's over a mile. We've got 31 runners lining up here. I have... What have I picked out? I have a mad one picked out here. Um, if I can find it. Yeah, so Michael Stout uh, with Harry Davis, who's a very, very good rider. This horse is 33 to 1. He's been dropped a couple of pounds. Um, he's running some decent races. He's And again, he's... He, 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 He's a horse, I think, could be one of these ones for the handicaps. He's in off A11. Harry takes three off him. He's a very, very good rider, this Harry. I don't know how long... Harry Davis, I don't know how long more his three pounds going to last. I actually read an interview at the start of the middle of the start of the season, and he was saying that he was trying to keep his claim for a couple of these handicaps in Royal Ascot. Hopefully, this is one of the ones. So, you want to get a couple of extra places, maybe five or six. Definitely five, if not six, or even seven on the day. Uh, Arian... Arion Power for some Michael Stout. Definitely an each-way player, 33-1. to one. Um, one of the other ones I see, could see running a, a cracking race for Rafe Beckett, Jimi Hendrix. Always turns up in these handicaps to give a good performance of himself. Um, Four-year-old by New Bay, of course. He's run some cracking races. Ross Ryan, cracking rider. And, of course, um, yeah, Jimi Hendrix. So the two I go for each way here are Jimi Hendrix and Sir Michael Stout's horse. Where is he gone? Arian Power. The Royal Hunt Cup. Then we're going to kick on to the Queen's Vaz. This is a group two. It's three-year-olds only. It's 14 runners, and it's over mile six. I'm going to go for one here. Uh, original selection, Aiden O'Brien, Ray Moore, Pecan Opera. I just think um, six to one. Yeah, you could definitely have an each-way play to nothing on this. Um, Son of Galileo. I think his performance is... He's two from three, and uh, yeah, I just think he's he doesn't do a flashy, but I just think he does enough, and I think he's honest, genuine. The farm is franked. He's run. Uh, he won a, a mail a mile maiden in Leperstown. Fifteen, fifteen of them were, were, were lining up. So that takes a bit of winning after um, finishing second on debut in Nays over seven. And then he went to Navin over mile five on soft ground, um, where he beat Interassa by a half a length. Yeah. Um, who was after winning a race? So, yeah, I think I think the form is a little bit deeper than what it looks. And I just think it's six to one, even sevens. Peak and Opera surely should be in the first three. So for me, in each way, I play to nothing with Pekin Opera. The one they're going off to all have to be is John Gosden's horse, Frankie Dottori. Gregory looks like he has 
um, two cracking runs under a spell. But no, I'm just going to keep the short and sweet peaking up for each way in the penultimate race of day two. Then we're going to kick to the finale. That is the Windsor Castle, five furlongs, 26 of the heats are line up here. For uh, Yeah, this is a cracking race. This is for, um, this is the boys edition of the Queen Mary, I suppose. So this is for over five, 26, two-year-olds. And uh, I'm going to go for one of Aidan O'Brien's, but this time it's the outside. Uh, Wayne Lorden takes over. Uh, Alabama, I just think he's been held in high regard. Brad and Peckerby by no one and ever, who's, of course, one of the speedier sires. Um, very, he was fancied very much on debut, was beaten by a decent horse in Cork, soft, heavy ground, wouldn't probably relish the conditions, and then went to the Cora, where it was odds on. He was actually six to four in the odds on that day and was fourth in uh, eight runner maiden. Um, but I just think he was still learning on the job. Um, done a few things wrong that day and think he come on from the run at 14 to one. I'm willing to take a chance with him here. So for me, I'm going to go for Alabama, for Aiden O'Brien, and Wayne Norton in the last each way. We, yeah, we covered all seven races again. It's 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 actually a race day. The third race, I, I just, I'm just going to leave alone. It's a race day that um, nothing was jumping, jumping off the page. But some of some of them, I have uh, at big prices. I think they're just worth a little. You could put four of them into look at fifteen and have a small little fun bit for the day. But yeah, it looks like it's going to be a cracking competitive day's racing again. I'm really looking forward to the the latter end of the the week. I think. Um, Towards the Friday, Saturday's racing is going to be cracking races. I know I said it was going to come on the bunches of twos, but I just think I wanted to get through tomorrow first, and then I'm really looking forward to the rest of the racing. But yeah, no, it's off to a flying start, and hopefully we can keep it, keep it going. We can hopefully we can better what we've done today. As I said, look, we're looking forward to some again competitive cracking racing. I really appreciate the likes and supports, and hit that like button, hit the share button, subscribe doesn't cost anything and um yeah talk to you for day three cheers guys